Okay, we're here in the state of Florida versus Nicholas Cruz, two separate uh, cases, two separate issues were set for today. Uh, the first one is case number 18-14129, CF10A, the defense motion for no contact order. I understand from my assistant that, that uh, the defense is withdrawing that motion, is that correct? Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Yes, we are. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and draft an order that the motion is withdrawn and it doesn't need to be heard by the court, is that correct? Yes, thank okay, you. Okay, sure. Now, moving on to the next matter that's set for today is in case number 181958CF10A. We are here on the defense motion for rule to show cause. And that matter is still going forward, is that correct? Yes, correct. Okay. And we have uh, all of the lawyers are present in the sheriff's office, the state, as well as for the defendant. The defendant is present. And I am ready for argument whenever you all are ready. Melissa McNeil on behalf of the Hills Cruz. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. Christian Subano on behalf of the Sheriff's Office. Good morning. Diane Kiki on behalf of Mr. Cruz as well, Your Honor. Judges, uh, this is in reference to uh, D17. As the court is aware, on May 22nd, we signed an agreed order which is attached to our motion as Exhibit A, compelling disclosure of Mr. Cruz's medical records, concern, medical and mental health records. The order clearly and specifically directed that all records disclosed through this order shall not be disclosed to any persons or entities other than law enforcement personnel directly involved in the investigation of the pending criminal matter, members of the state attorney's office directly involved in the prosecution of the pending criminal case, and Nicholas Cruz and his attorney record. The court specifically and clearly outlined in that order that a subsequent order would be required prior to any further disclosure of those records. So one of the reasons why the defense agreed to the release of the records to the state attorney's office was because the state had indicated that they would take protections um, to ensure that the confidentiality of those records, because they're protected by federal law, was ensured. And then the court further took steps to make sure that those records would be protected in an effort to make sure that Mr. Cruz got a fair trial pursuant to the United States and Florida Constitution. So what happened, Judge, was uh, we were advised by counsel for who we're referring to as Dr. N, who is the subject of these records, Mr. Cook, that he had received contact from members of the an investigator from the Fort Lauderdale, I'm sorry, from the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, that they were seeking um, an opportunity to speak with that doctor. And counsel advised that investigator, who is known as Mr. Lyons, or Detective Lyons, that this doctor would not speak with them. And they also said that they, meaning Mr. Cook from the law office of the doctor, said, if you want the records, you're going to have to uh, get a subpoena. At that point, um, Detective Lyons advised counsel for the doctor that they had the records. Um, what we have provided um, in our motion, to exhibit, known as Exhibit B, is an affidavit from uh, uh, Bianca Brunstrom, B-R-O-S-T-R-O-M, who is a legal assistant for Mr. Cook, indicating that her office complied with the court's order and submitted the records to the state attorney's office, specifically Mrs. Tate, and then and myself, which we got pursuant to um, a, a signed release from Mr. Cruz. And then we also attached Exhibit C, which is a sworn affidavit from attorney Peter Cook, who actually spoke with Detective Lyons, and that affidavit sets forth the facts of the conversation that Mr. Cook had with Detective Lyons. Detective Lyons was working with the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas Public Safety Commission and should not have been in possession of those records. When the defense found out that there was a violation of the court order, um, we filed two rules to or petitions for rules to show cause, one against the state of Florida, which is uh, D14. The court has dismissed that order, and you dismiss that order pursuant to um, Exhibit D attached to this motion, where you indicated that Exhibit D is an affidavit from Detective Lyons indicating that he misspoke when he talked to Detective Cook and said that he did not receive the records from the state attorney's office. He received them from the Broward Sheriff's Office. I've already stated out the parameters of the court's order that you signed on May 22nd of 2018. I've attached 
four affidavits, including one that was supplied by the state attorney's office in defense of the petition for rule to show cause that we filed. And we have therefore established the essential facts constituting contempt, and we would ask that the court set this down for an evidentiary hearing so that we can bring in Detective Lyons from the commission and he can advise us as to how he obtained those records. And then we would ask that we be able to call witnesses from the Broward Sheriff's Office to find out who violated the court order and turn those records over to the commission. Not only is it a violation of the court order, but it's a violation of federal law, which protects not only Mr. Cruz's mental health records, but any other individual that seeks treatment in this country. The reason why this law is so important is because it encourages individuals that have mental health issues to get treatment and to know that those treatment records will be protected. So based on the arguments set forth today and on September 26, the affidavits contained within our motion, we would ask that the court issue an order to show cause and set an evidentiary hearing where the court can make a determination if, in fact, the Broward Sheriff's Office is in violation of your court order. Nothing else, Judge. Okay. Thank you. Does the Sheriff's Office wish to be heard? Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, as stated in the petition for the order to show cause, the defense has not, it's not legally sufficient. I can pass a case to the court, 577 Southern 2nd 967. It's, thank you, not passed without the counsel. It was in this courthouse where Judge Patty Penning attempted to hold the State Attorney's Office in contempt for a violation that occurred in her courtroom. And in that case, the court ruled that neither the entire State Attorney's Office nor the State Attorney himself as captain of the ship were guilty of indirect criminal contempt based on Assistant State Attorney's repeated misrepresentations of readiness for trial, absent evidence that the entire State Attorney's Office or the State Attorney himself had personal knowledge of the matters that were grounds for contempt. In this case, on May the 22nd of 2018, when the court entered the order, the Broward Sheriff's Office was not present. The Broward Sheriff's Office Office of General Counsel, I'm on the e-service notification, but we did not receive e-service notification for this order. I guess it's just selective on what they send us, nor was the Deputy Chief Terrence Lynch. So we did not have an opportunity to review that order, nor set it down for a rehearing to notice the Attorney General's Office in regards to releasing those records. We take your orders very seriously. We would not purposely or knowingly violate the court's order or try to circumvent the court's order in this particular case. Detective Lyons, I did speak with him. He did not personally receive the records from the Broward State Attorney, I'm sorry, the Broward Sheriff's Office. He said the commission received those records. So I attempted to track down who in DSO sent those records. I spoke to homicide detectives. I spoke to chain of command that are present still at the office today, and they were able to speak amongst themselves, and they were not able to track down who in the Bureau or a clerical or former command sent those records to the MSD commission. The order as it reads was an order compelling disclosure, and at the bottom of that order it did have a protective clause in regards to further disclosure. But again, the purpose of today's hearing is to determine whether or not the agency as a whole had knowledge and purposely violated the court's order, and those facts aren't present. Okay, anything else? No, Judge. Well, yes, actually, in order for the Broward Sheriff's Office to obtain those records, they had to have come from the State Attorney's Office who was aware of the court order and should have advised whoever they turned those records over to the Broward Sheriff's Office that the court had granted this order with the caveat that this information not be disseminated to anybody else besides the individuals listed in the order without further order of the court. Furthermore, we were also advised in compliance with the court's order from whenever we were here this week, you had requested that the commission for, you requested Mr. Jones to submit a list of the individuals who were investigators for the commission as well as the list of the records that was obtained by the commission, and in that letter, Mr. Jones indicated that the source of the records in question were 
provided to the commission by the Broward <coughs> State Attorney's Office. Um, if I may approach, this letter was also cc'd to the State Attorney's Office. Well, I think the party uh, vote. Are we going to say something? I this is for the Sure. Steve, at SO, so I don't know. Sheriff's Office. Okay. Well, Judge, in any event, this letter also substantiates the fact that the records were turned over to the Broward SO's <coughs> Office, stated Sheriff's Office. So we can supplement. Uh, our motion with this letter, but I believe that we have in fact met our burden and established the essential facts to at least merit an evidentiary hearing <clears throat> that this motion, <clears throat> excuse me, is not facially deficient and that we would request an evidentiary hearing so that we can get to the bottom of this. We can find out who is blatantly disregarding the court's order and not only violating the court's order, but violating um, federal law by disseminating private confidential mental health records. Okay. I'm going to take the matter under advisement, and uh, I will have an order by the beginning of next week, either uh, entering an order to show cause or denying the motion for order to show cause. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor. Uh, sure. Counsel brought this up. The, the state attorney's office did, in fact, we went to an evidentiary hearing, would show that we did send the orders that you signed to the DSO. Okay. I would ask that the court that take that into consideration that the state attorney's office did, in fact, provide notice to the Broward Sheriff's Office. Mr. Uh, Brown, counsel for the Broward Sheriff's Office stands by the um, assertion that they didn't have notice of that order, and Mr. Klinger has just supported the fact that they did. And Your Honor, may we respond? Sure. The argument that I made was that Officer General Counsel did not receive the order, nor will we be present in court. Um, if they did send that uh, order, it was the order agreeing uh, to compel disclosure, um, and it was um, based on what the State Attorney's Office said was sent to one detective. That detective, Detective Curcio, stated that he did not release those records, and that why, that's why it was my position to try to hunt down that person who did, in fact, release those records, and I was not able to do so. Again, this is not the Broward Sheriff's Office deflect, deflecting blame. If we did release those records, it was a mistake. We shouldn't have done it, but my position is that we need to clarify that in the future to have us be put on notice so Office General Counsel's Office can provide it to the rest of the agency on what they should or should not be doing, not for a detective to get an order compelling disclosure, um, and at the bottom having a protective order that he may or may not have read. But Detective Curcio did not release those records personally. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. We're in recess for the approved cases. I do have a, another docket that'll start as soon as we finish here.